Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Of course, today we are continuing the Football Manager career mode. Let's switch straight over to it because today we have two cup games. We're just getting through the cups today. We have the FA Cup third round at home against Burnley and then against Manchester City at home. The Carabao Cup quarter final. This is the other fixture, so we definitely got the hardest draw possible. And even in the previous round, didn't we play Liverpool, I'm pretty sure? Yeah, we played Liverpool, beat them 2-0. So we've really not had an easy run. We had Brentford, you know, Premier League opposition in the third round. In the second round, were we in this? We were, and we had Oxford. So we've really, really struggled with our our draws in this, in this uh, competition. But if we're going to win it, you're going to have to beat the best teams. And if we manage to beat Manchester City, then you have to think we're one of the favorites to go on and win the competition so taking a look at that of course we now know who we are playing and that first game against Burnley is coming up and as you can see here Cole Palmer has sealed a loan to Chelsea no obligation to buy no option to buy nothing of the sort just yet but I think you know given that Mudrick is going to be out for a few weeks and it also just aligns with real life I think that this will be a good signing for us. He can play in the central midfield as an attacking midfielder, and that's exactly what we might need. Maybe he can help, um, you know, cover for Enzo and things like that. And then, of course, he can play on the right-hand side as an inverted winger, which is what we play through the middle as a shadow striker, which is exactly what we play. And on the left, I'm training him up just to make him as good as possible as an attacking uh, inside forward. But you can see he has the stats to already play that position realistically. And of course he can play up front and give us a bit of cover there. So this is a good signing in my opinion. I'm very, very happy to get this one over the line given that Mudrick is out for about you know two weeks to four weeks somewhere in that region. Plus it's just going to help us rotate and get a bit more quality in the side. And maybe put some pressure on Nkunku who whilst he has all these amazing stats has failed to light up the Premier League as of yet. 14 appearances and only four goals, no assists. You know, it's it's not quite what we're looking for. So unless he can, you know, get his form under control, then maybe Cole Palmer will be the player that sort of puts pressure on him. But let's go into, ahead into this game against Burnley. There is a very tight turnaround. But of course, we have this game, two-day break. And then we have the Manchester City game. There's no travelling involved, so that's a bonus for us. Um, and then there's only a three-day break to Newcastle. Three-day break, break to Brighton, two-day break to Fulham. You know, we've got some really quick and fast uh, games coming up here. So we're going to have to think about that in terms of our selection. And Ben Chilwell, not really capable of playing this game. But Mark Kukurea, when he did play in the previous episode, looked really, really good. So he's going to get a start. Rhys James is going to come off. Malo Gusto is going to get a start. In the midfield, Romeo Lavia is what I wanted to play for uh, instead of Enzo Fernandez, but he's not quite fit. Andre Santos is away on international duty as well, so we've really sort of lost a lot of our midfielder options. So what I'm going to do instead is play Conor Gallagher in the box-to-box -box by there, and hopefully we can bring on maybe Romeo Lavia at some point for Enzo Fernandez if everything is going well. Christopher Nkunku is tired but we don't have anyone really to play on that left wing unless we want to play Ian Matson there that is probably our best option but I sort of wanted to reserve him as a replacement for Kukurea or something like that the defense I think I might make one change I might bring Badia Shiele in for Levi Colwell and he will drop to the bench and then on that left hand side I think what I'm going to do is this so that we have you know some cover I guess I'll bring Trevor Chalaba onto the bench, but Nkunku really is tired here, so we need to be looking, if we can, at getting a few early goals, and then bringing on someone like Ian Matson on that left wing position to take over. So a lot of changes for this game, a few players that aren't you know, quite um, in perfect condition, but we'll see how this one goes. We've got the bigger game against um, Manchester City next. And Kunku with the ball here as he's going to look to whip one into the box. He does, he finds Badia Shile at the back post and that vindicates our decision to play him, I suppose. Badia Shile getting us ahead with five minutes only gone in this game. So that is a good start and that is an assist for Christopher and Kunku, which is more of what we need to see from him because as I was saying, his form just ain't quite been all there as of yet. But that is a good start to proceedings for us today. And a nasty tackle on Nkunku there by, I think that's Connor Roberts. And he is going to get a red card. 
and they are going to be forced into making some changes here and that should hopefully you know allow us to comfortably win this game Kukurea now finding Chukwameka Kukurea back on the ball ball into the box bro your headers but it's just over the bar that was an awkward angle he was sort of going backwards trying to catch that but overall, I think we're looking pretty solid here. We should be capable of winning this game anyway. But the fact that they're now down to 10 men, I, if we lose it, I'll be very annoyed. Put it that way. As Nkunku has the ball in the box and now it's back to Kukurea who finds Nkunku again. He looks to shoot, but the ball is blocked. And could this be a Burnley counter-attack? No, Badi Ashil um, completely mops it up and decides to go for a run down the left wing. Kukurea puts the ball into the box. Can't quite get on the end of that one. The ball goes back in. And there is a foul on Broya. Who was that? And Taylor has committed a foul against Broya there. We saw him running through trying to challenge the keeper. And that's got to be. That has to be a penalty. I watched that with my own eyes. There we go. Penalty awarded. It should be in Kunku, I think, taking it. It is. He steps up. He shoots. And he misses. That was a... I'm telling you guys, you know. And Kunku, let me know what you guys think of him. Maybe you see it differently to me but so far in this series I have not been impressed with Nkunku's performances um, at all really and that is a, a missed penalty which would have been brilliant because it means we could have made some changes at half time. 10 minutes to go until half time and the boys are looking to get us two goals ahead we need something to change the tides here because one minute at half time when they've had a red card for most of this game will be very frustrating as Chukamaker finds Sterling he looks to shoot and it's off the post we just can't catch a break today Barrier Shield on the ball now gotta go wide to Kukurea and we do just that as the ball goes through for Armando Broya and it's a chip ball over the keeper and it comes off the crossbar why can't we get a second goal Gusto now on the ball as he gets the ball to Sterling. Ball into the box. No one on the end of it, but Conor Gallagher is going to chase this down and get us back underway again. The ball tries to go through to Broya, but it's not quite capable of that. And Burnley looking to play a bit of a counter-attack here as De Sassi finds Kukurea, finds Enzo. Can he unlock the defence? He goes forward to Chukumaker, nearly finding Broya, but he wins it back. Back to Broya. <laughs> We've gone back to the defence, to Kukurea. Find a cross, please. He does. Taylor headers wide. Sterling looks to cross. Finds Carney took a maker and it's a good save from the keeper. And we're in the 44th minute here as the ball finds Carney. Finding Sterling, he shoots, but it is blocked. This is ridiculous, guys. The fact that we haven't managed to get more than one goal against a Burnley team who are coming into this on awful form and at the same time having a red card. This is just it's shocking from us. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be it. That is going to be half time. And I'm going to tell the guys we're controlling possession. You know, I don't want to demoralize them, not even a little bit. So I'm going to make some changes here as well because I have to think about that Manchester City game that we've got coming up. So these are the changes that I'm going to be making. Sterling off as well. And Kunku ideally needs to be coming off. I think Broya can play on the left wing. He can. And as an inside forward, it's basically, you know, a, a striker. So I'm going to make this change. And we should be good. Yeah, four changes. That'll be fine. Hopefully this team can go and get a couple more goals. Because we've even got, you know, two strikers on the pitch now. So you'd really think we should be capable of scoring at least one more goal. Especially while they're down to ten men. Broya now in the box. Finding Kukurea, who finds Nicholas Jackson. It's a fantastic save from the keeper. Gallagher now on the ball. Trying to find something to unlock this defence. As he drives into the box. He finds a ball in, it comes off someone, Egan Riley maybe, Nicholas Jackson, I'm not too sure. And they are going to go to VAR to check whether this was a legitimate goal or not. My guess is it's going to be ruled out, because that just seems to be our luck today. And the referee says, goal disallowed, Burnley win a free kick, he was tripped by Jackson. This is ridiculous guys, how on earth have we not scored more than one goal? This game really does look like it's set up to be a bit of a Burnley smash and grab unless we can do something about it because right now I am fearing that counter-attack in which... Oh, oh wow, the defenders made an absolute howler of it as Noni Madawake finds Nicholas Jackson who gets himself on the score sheet and that one will not be ruled out. Burnley now looking to get themselves a goal. They've pretty much gone all attacking as much as they can with the man down that they are currently 
uh, dealing with as Nicholas Jackson tries to find Madaweke. But here we go. This is the Burnley counterattack that I said could happen. And they look at a run through. Rodriguez is onside. Chalaber mops that ball up nicely, though. And Sanchez looks to put us on a counterattack of our own. Maybe O'Shea manages to pick up the ball. They go long again. Chalaber winning a header, doing a good job before he probably goes out on loan. As Broya's now out wide for us, looking to beat his man. He cuts inside, he shoots, and it's just wide. Now there's suspicion of a handball or something here, I believe. Amduni, I believe that is pronounced. Um, went up for a header against Buddy Ashiel, and the referee is checking it. He does say penalty awarded. That'll be Nicholas Jackson set to take this penalty. I have brought Broya off the pitch now, and Ian Matson is playing at left wing. Nicholas Jackson shoots, and the keeper makes another save. Two penalty saves. In one game for this keeper, he is keeping them in this by a long shot. Malogusto now with the ball, finding Madaweke, who finds Badiashil in the box and he is tripped. The referee isn't even going to look at that for a penalty. That did look a little suspicious to me, but Lavia now on the ball, goes over the top trying to find Madaweke, but he can't quite find the pass. And Chalaber now on the ball again, trying to find Malogusto. As he goes down the wing, crosses into the box, it's at the back sticks, no one's there. Kukurea going to try himself maybe. Pretty much loses out on it. Can he win the ball back or is it a Burnley counter-attack we're seeing here? Our defender's doing a great job of mopping up possession. Ball over the top. Matson Jackson, but that was definitely offside. I was watching that one. I'm pretty sure Matson was offside and then pretty sure Jackson was also offside when that ball came through to him. And I'm assuming, yep, yeah, disallowed. And that is full time in that fixture. And as you can see on the left hand side, we had an XG of 5. A 5 XG, and we only managed to score 2. 2 penalty saves. This is just ridiculous. How on earth? What did their keeper get? He got a 9.2 rating. I think that is more than fair. He had the game of his life today. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is game day. We are here for this game against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals if we win this game I would expect us to go on and win the competition if we don't having knocked out Liverpool and Manchester City the two teams leading the way in the Premier League at the moment I would be devastated but you can see we have prepared well coming into this game the entire team is fit of course bar the injured Mudrick and he will be coming off and I think what we'll be doing of course we do have Cole Palmer but he is ineligible to play against his parent club so very unfortunate because he probably would have got this game. But what I'm going to do is shift Nkunku onto this side and play Carney Chukwamaker through the middle. We'll be bringing Ian Matson onto the bench. Um, Carney Chukwamaker a little unfit. Maybe Conor Gallagher would be a shout, you know. You know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a fully fit Conor Gallagher going in that shadow striker role. He's more than capable of playing it. He's got good finishing. He's, he's used to this role, having previously sort of done this sort of thing at uh, Crystal Palace when he was on loan there. And overall, I think that's a pretty strong lineup. I don't think I'm going to make any changes to this other than that. I'm nervous because I want to get this win and hopefully go on to lift a trophy this season. You can see Wesley Fafan is still gaining sharpness. Badia Shield, should I have him on the bench? I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to keep Trevor Chalbert. He he played very well last game. Although, mm, Badia Shield did get a headed goal. You know what? I'm going to bring him onto the bench instead of Trevor Chalbert. And I think... This is the lineup that we're going to go with. If we do start to sort of struggle, I will switch to this formation and have us play with a defensive midfielder. But for now, we'll go in playing as we always do. And we've, of course, gone for a full strength lineup. But Ortega starts in goal for Manchester City. Cancelo, Diaz, Laporte, Vardiol, Rodri, and Otavio, De Bruyne, Silva, Grealish, and Haaland. So it's pretty much by the keeper, their strongest 11. Oi, 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 this is going to be a tough game. I'm really worried that we're going to get pumped by them um, because we've gone for an attacking formation, but hopefully we can get the win here. And we start the game off with Manchester City on the ball. Of course, we've gone for Broya up front today, not Nicholas Jackson, simply because he has been in the better form. You know, I can't justify dropping a player who's been banging in the goals for us. But here you can see Chilwell on this side defending against, um, who was it on that side? I'm not sure if it's Grealish or whatever it was. But Reese James has found space down here. And he is looking to take us forward as he finds Raheem Sterling. Ball through for Conor Gallagher. What a chance. What a goal. That is fantastic. What a start. 40 seconds in and we have got a goal up against Manchester City. Wow. That was fantastic. We're going to watch the replay on this. Reese James 
doing a great job of progressing us forward as Sterling finds a beautiful ball through there. I thought he might look to square it to Broya, but that finish is outstanding and probably justifies the decision to play him over Carney Trukamaker, which we of course decided last minute going into this game. Bilwell looking to put the ball into the box from deep here. He does. Can't quite find anyone though. And now this will be Haaland's chance to break against us. This is exactly what I didn't want Haaland going through. And we're looking a little bit shaky here. We're all out of position. And now they have found their positions for this attack. They go forward. Reese James with a good header though. Caicedo wins the ball back. Reese James again. The ball is just flying around in the air. And the ball lands with Sterling. Can he take us forward and alleviate some pressure off the back line? We desperately need it. As Reese James and Sterling combine, and Enzo nearly loses out there, but we manage to keep a hold of this ball. James finding a good ball through for Sterling, but De Bruyne is in the back end, mopping up. That is fantastic play from him as they look to go long, but the keeper's way out of position here. Gallagher turns, shoots, what a goal again! Enzo finding Gallagher, and he just spins on the spot and bangs that one into the bottom left corner while the keeper is out of position. That was beautiful stuff. Ortega making a big blunder here as he goes long, but Enzo is the only player he can find. Galga touch and hits it before it even touches the ground. That is fantastic. Galga is vindicating my decision to play him tenfold right now. He is on for a hat trick against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. And we go in at half time, 2 0 up. And we haven't really seen a highlight from Manchester City in which they've looked threatening. So I'm going to tell the guys, I'm very happy with how it's going and keep it up. And I'm going to send the same team out. Bro, you're really having a poor game so far, but I don't want to make any changes whilst things stand. I could go to the defensive formation, but I think I'm going to save that till later on in the game. I do not want to invite pressure whilst, you know, this Manchester City side that is so capable of scoring goals um, it would be attacking us. I think that'd be a silly move as they look to go long, but Colwell manages to win that. Gallagher not quite getting the ball off Otavio here, as he goes down the line, finds João Cancelo, finds Rodrigo, De Bruyne in the box, but that ball was deflected, and Nkunku now on the ball, looking to take us forward. The boys combining really nicely here to play us out of pressure. Caicedo finding Colwell and De Sassi, and that was really good play there for us, and now Broya is through, what a long ball, he goes past the keeper, Gallagher, headers, off the post! Oh my lord, that was close. And as we hit roughly the 75th minute, I am now going to set us up to defend this lead as we go with, who is the better tackler? Caicedo with 18 tackling, Lavia with 14. So I'm going to put Caicedo in this role. Hopefully he can sort of, you know, shut down that defence and keep us nice and comfortable at the back. Broya is having a poor game, so I'm going to bring him off, bring Nicholas Jackson on, get us some energy up the pitch, and hopefully put some pressure on them, and then maybe make one change, Sterling off, oh, and Kunku's the one having a poor game actually, so I'll put Sterling onto the left, and Madueke on the right, and I don't want to make too many more changes, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. This team is performing brilliantly as things stand. Gomez looks to whip the ball in for Manchester City. Calvin Phillips headers the ball, but it goes over the bar, and that would have been a very bad goal to concede. But we are now into added time, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. A 2-0 win, two goals thanks to Conor Gallagher, with some absolute brilliance for both Raheem Sterling and Enzo Fernandez getting the assists. And I'm going to tell them that is as comprehensive as it gets. We've blown them away. That was fantastic. So that puts us through to the next round. Leeds next to take a uh, beat Brighton rather. That is a big result for them. And Manchester United took on Charlton and beat them. So that, I mean, that is going to leave us with a tough competition, a tough, tough next round rather in the semi-final. It will be drawn soon, but more than likely, I think we're going to end up with Tottenham or Man United knowing our luck. Tottenham yet to take on Stockport, so they could get a shock result there, Stockport. But there's still... Two big teams, you know, if we lose to Tottenham, oh my god, that'd be an absolute disaster. But overall, Conor Gallagher, absolutely the man of the match. Let's give that boy a hug, because that was a fantastic performance from him. And two 2-0 two wins at home in the Cups, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. We are through to the next round. And ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed that one, please be sure to leave a like on it, because that win, surely that deserves a like. Hit subscribe so you never miss a future video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.